Hey there everyone, Dr. Beth Westy here and I got this question, can I detox my thyroid? Hmm, right? So I thought I would do an entire video dedicated to thyroid stuff and things that you can do to make your thyroid healthier overall, right? Just kind of a general, hey, let's get my thyroid working. Now if you're looking at this list here and you're like, yeah, that seems like a lot of other things that I do to like keep my whole body healthy, yes! <laughs> Yes, absolutely. So, first in talking about thyroid, um, a lot of women have issues with their thyroid. Or they have thyroid symptoms and they get their thyroid tested and they're like, my thyroid is normal or my thyroid stimulating hormone, my TSH is normal. Why am I having all these symptoms? I also have other hormone issues, I have stress issues, et cetera, et cetera, right? Like the list goes on and on. And one of the things about thyroid is that thyroid's kind of, finicky in the body, right? Your brain tells your thyroid to make thyroid hormone, and then that gets converted in your system and used. Now, if you want, I can do a whole video dedicated to this and some other things um, you know, that cause issues. But essentially, your brain tells your thyroid, hey, make some stuff, make thyroid. <laughs> and so that process, that is what they test in is called thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, right? That's the most common thing that gets tested. But that's just your brain telling your thyroid to make the thyroid stuff. Then your thyroid will make thyroid, right? T4. And then that gets converted to T3, typically in the liver, right? Um, <laughs> yes, more videos. <laughs> um, and... And then it's the T3 that gets used by your cells and your tissues, right? And and I when I first started learning about this in grad school, I was like, who designed this? Like, what kind of system is this? Your brain has to tell the thyroid and then it makes this one thing, but that's not what the body mostly uses. It has to convert it into something else and that's what the body mostly uses. Are you kidding me? <laughs> And how your body knows that if it's too much or too little of something is it's a negative feedback system, right? It has to have an overload or an underload of it. That's not a word. Too much or too little of it. And then your brain's like, oh, that's not right. Let's just stop making as much. It's like a game of telephone, right? <laughs> we all remember that game, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the tricky thing for a lot of women is that if you have issues with your hormones, your estrogen, right? If you're estrogen dominant, or if you have a lot of stress, cortisol, it can throw off that conversion. So this is where I work with women all the time in terms of they're like, yeah, I have all these thyroid symptoms, but my thyroid tested normal, my TSH, right? The one that's, you know, <laughs> telling my thyroid what to do, that's normal. Why the heck do I feel like I have a thyroid issue, right? And it could be that your cortisol levels are messing up that conversion, right? Just some things to look into and understand about how your body works and why you're feeling the way that you're feeling. So these are things that we do in the 12 week challenge. These are things that we work on in the 12 week challenge. If you are not on the wait list for the next 12 week challenge, I'm going to put this link right here in the comments for you to get on the wait list. Now for this 12 week challenge, this includes a Dutch test. Um, we also, uh, depending on the person, I may recommend other testing. Um, just, you know, if, if it's something that you need, but I also like to take a comprehensive look at your body and system and how it's functioning to make sure we're making the right recommendations for you moving forward. Um, one of the things that Dutch does test for is um, it can tell me whether or not you have a lot of inflammation in your body. Inflammation is one of the things that can mess up your thyroid. How it's functioning, how much it's making, how it's converting, all that stuff. So that's overall info on thyroid, like why it's a problem for most women and why they're so confused and frustrated with their bodies, with everything, right? Now in terms of detoxing thyroid, right, can you detox your thyroid? your thyroid isn't really a detox organ, right? There's a lot of things in your body that detox naturally. Lymph nodes, right? You got lymph nodes here, lymph nodes in your pits, you know? Um, sweat glands, your breath, breathing, that detoxes things. Liver, like the main detoxer. Kidneys also detox, right? Like there's a lot of systems in your body 
that detox. Thyroid isn't one of them, right? What does thyroid do, right? It's in charge of your overall temperature, metabolism, and heart rate. So when you look at like, oh, this huge chain of command of like the brain telling the thyroid and then that's got to get converted, I'm like pointing to my liver, like, and then it's got to get converted and used by the tissues. What is it doing? These things. These things. Yep. And most of the time people notice with metabolism. Now I have had thyroid issues um, myself. Um, I had postpartum thyroiditis after all three of my children were born. Oh which means my thyroid went hyper and then hypo and then I just felt like garbage. Um, so I know exactly how frustrating it is to feel like your body isn't responding well and to have thyroid issues. Um, I was able to get my thyroid to resolve and I don't use anything for it anymore, um, but it was bad after I had babies. See again, thyroid uh, connected to hormones, it's a thing, it's absolutely a thing. Um, and I, I don't have a lot of thyroid in my family history, so it's a very random thing, right? So overall, in the question of detoxing thyroid, can your thyroid detox? No, your thyroid doesn't do that. But here are some things you can do for your body to function better so your thyroid works better. This, like, this literally bothers me because the thyroid doesn't detox. So I'm just going to go like this. Thyroid doesn't detox, but we can get your thyroid functioning really, really well. Now, there are some dietary recommendations, some supplement recommendations that um, I will make for somebody when we work together in the 12 week challenge. Again, that link is below if you wanna get on the wait list and learn more about that. Um, but in general, here are some things to really focus on. First is like clean food and filtered water. Organic food, right? Um, you wanna make sure that you're getting healthy whole foods as much as possible. Um, you know, the closer to nature, seasonal eating, all that stuff, and then filtered water, makes sure that your thyroid's not getting overwhelmed. Um, I have th Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Yeah, ooh, and Hashimoto's is a whole different bear. Yeah, because that's an autoimmune. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. So for people who have autoimmune and thyroid stuff, we focus on, a, it's a little, it's a tweak. It's different things that are really gonna work the best. Mm -hmm. Other things to make sure that you're getting is no chemicals. No chemicals, as little as chemicals as possible, right? Your body is supposed to detox naturally, but when you have stress, when you have hormone issues, when your thyroid isn't working the way that it should or you feel like it's not, right? It, it has to do a lot of work. So what type of chemicals are these, right? PCBs, BPAs, perchlorates, dioxins, pesticides, heavy metals, all this stuff. It's a lot of big words to say. It's like stuff that's everywhere. You know, things that are on your lawn, on your neighbor's lawn, um, things that are in paints and chemicals, in um, cleaning products, in um, oh, construction things, new furniture, mattresses, you know, uh, plastic containers, right? And a lot of things now are, they're looking at, especially BPAs, a lot of people know what that is. Um, you know, it's like chemicals and plastics and stuff. So we're really looking at that. But I mean, if you think about how things are treated and even things like, like, or do you use a coffee filter? Is your coffee filter bleached? What chemicals are they using? The food that you eat, if it's being processed somehow, what chemicals, heats, everything else are they using in that process that there's gonna be trace amounts in the food and then how much of it are you eating? Those things add up, right? This is not to say like, oh my gosh, don't eat anything ever, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, you can get to a point where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so worried. I, um, this isn't gonna go well. Like, uh, I can't eat anything because everything's bad. <laughs> the thing is, is that your body is meant to handle this and it should, but a lot of times we just get overwhelmed with it, right? It, it, it's like a log jam of stuff just because there's so much coming at us. So by eliminating and limiting as much as we can, it helps our body function really, really well overall. Um, other things to help your system, right? And these are things that we do more and dive into more in the 12 week challenge, but overall doing like dry brushing, sweating, right? Like getting things moving out of your system. But the big thing for detox is actually your liver. I tried to write liver in cursive and then I was like, that looks weird. <laughs> so I put liver over here just so you know. <laughs> But the big key thing is this, is that if your 
gut is working well, if your liver is working well, if your body can process through things it get, and you're managing and mitigating stress and you're getting your other female hormones under control, your thyroid gets the opportunity to work and function better. It's, it's sort of like a side effect. Again, thyroid can be finicky. Thyroid can be, you know, a little temperamental, right? So it's important to realize you, um, your overall health impacts your thyroid health, right? Your health is cumulative and everything is connected in the body. And these are things that I really, really teach in the 12 week challenge. So nothing is isolated, nothing is on its own. Make sure that you're doing all the things, right? Metabolism, people are like, oh yeah, I'm gonna eat this supplement to boost my metabolism. I'm gonna cut this nutrient. I'm gonna eat this food because it's a, meta Google metabolism boosting foods. There will be like a list of things. Kale, avocados, la la la. Sure, sure. But just by eating that, does that mean like, oh, my metabolism's boosted. Woo, here we go. No, that's not how the body works. Not how the body works, right? Start with human physiology and go from there and build off of there. And what I teach you, again, and what we do in the 12 week challenge is go off of female physiology and go from there. Other info that I have for you, if you wanna check it out, The Female Fat Solution, this book is on Amazon. Um, I talk more about eating for nutrition uh, and your hormones and cycle in there. The Female Menopause Solution, this is also on Amazon. Again, nutrition for women that are in perimenopause and menopause. And also realize that if your body has gone through a hormonal shift and change, it does impact your thyroid function too. A lot of women have thyroid issues after their hormones change going through perimenopause and menopause. That's very normal. It just means you have to work with your body differently because you live in a different body now. You live in a different meat suit. Yeah. Um, other things are my YouTube channel is called Dr. Beth Westy. You can subscribe to that to stay updated on all the videos I have coming out. And my podcast is called The Female Health Solution. I have a ton of great, um, you know, uh, podcasts, interviews, everything else, more info for you to listen to, dive into, to help support you on your health journey. And of course, I'm a resource for you. If you have questions, if you need help, please do not hesitate to reach out. I hear from women every day from literally all over the world because this, these are issues that women struggle with everywhere all the time. So you're not crazy. It's a thing. And no matter how many times you've gotten your thyroid tested, you can always look at it more. When detoxing liver, is it common to have increased urination? Yes. Water intake hasn't increased much, but I feel like I'm going all the time. Great question. So think about this. If you have a lot of inflammation in your system, and your body starts processing it better and faster, what happens? It starts to release some of that. Yeah, that's awesome. Certain things get detoxed, you know, through sweat, through the liver, which then you poop it out, uh, or through kidneys, right, which then you urinate out. Things that go in the body, gotta come out of the body. Somewhere. It's physiology. <laughs> All right, so that's what I got for you guys today. Please let me know if you have questions, if you need anything else. Um, and again, if you want me to do a video on a specific topic, again, you can always put a comment below or send me a message separately if you want, and I'm more than happy to do that. All right, have a great rest of your night.